Maya Worktops are a modular range of products that deliver a great combination of top quality products that are easy to install. The sort of joints and finish that we will demonstrate today can be achieved by a kitchen fitter or even a competent DIYer with the correct tools and preparation. Even if you fit worktops regularly but haven't fitted Maya yet, this short demonstration will help you to achieve a top quality installation. If you've looked at some of the premium solid surface worktops in the market today, you'll perhaps be keen to have worktops with an undermounted sink, drainer grooves around the sink area, and most of all, virtually inconspicuous joints. We will never say invisible, but a well-fitted joint should have people guessing where the worktops meet. In this demonstration, we'll show you how to work with Maya, to cut it to size, make a seamless joint, install the sink module, apply edging, and fit some of the other products from the Maya range. The main installation will be using a 1.8 meter length of worktop jointed to a 1.8 meter sink module. Here, we're using Volcano. Having the right tools is always key to a job like this. Most of the equipment you need for fitting Maya worktops you will probably already be using if you're fitting kitchens and worktops regularly. For cutting and trimming the worktops, you will need a router. We're using an 1850 watt router with a half inch shank and a jigsaw or circular saw. The saw is used to cut the board roughly to size. The final cut should always be made with a router to make sure the cut is clean and perfectly straight. Use a random orbital sander to finish any joints or edges. The grades of sandpaper required are included in our jointing kit, but these are 120 grit, 240 grit and 320 grit. This is then finished off with a red Scotch-Brite pad. Using any other type of sander such as a belt sander will not give satisfactory results. Other things that you need are 10 mm spanner. This is a ratchet spanner that is particularly useful for tightening the worktop bolts from underneath the units. Worktop jig, hacksaw, spirit level, masking tape and tape measure. We also recommend a twin flute carbide tipped cutter, grooving saw or a biscuit cutter and a jig guide. Clamps. We've used a quick grip clamp to hold the jig in place and three-way clamps when we fit the edging. Low modulus silicon sealant or PVA adhesive for sealing cutouts or the back edge of the worktop. The silicon required for the Maya sink module comes as part of the kit, so we've used this during our installation. The Maya jointing kit comes with all of the consumable items that you will need to complete one joint. If this is not available at the time of the installation, you will not be able to satisfactorily complete the joint. One 75 milliliter sachet of color matched adhesive, three worktop bolts, three tongues, three grades of sandpaper, 120, 240 and 320 grit, a red Scotch-Brite pad, 7447, two cleaning wipes and of course a set of instructions. Where you need to apply edges on any cut ends, you will also need an extra sachet of adhesive. The pack will include a cleaning wipe to ensure any grease is removed and a good bond is achieved. Maya worktops are supplied pre-edged and also include an extra 1200 mm length of edging in the pack. If you need additional edging, this is supplied on its own in a tube. Maya worktops are delivered securely wrapped in durable shrink film and an outer carton. Avoid using a knife or blade to open the outer carton as this may damage the contents. Once you've removed the shrink film, you should check that there is no damage to the product and that the color spread is correct. The pack also contains the care and maintenance booklet, additional edging and heat reflective tape. The booklet should be left with the householder in order to complete the warranty registration form. This should also be signed by the installer. Now we're ready to measure up and start to plan our installation. Here we will need to cut the end off the worktop blank before we start to cut the joint. As the worktop has factory applied edging to both ends, we will cut off the far end of the worktop. The sink module here is a 1.8 meter length, so we will need to trim the left hand end ready for the joint and also trim the right hand end and apply new edging. 
the back edge of the worktop is easily scribed to follow any unevenness in the wall. The tool used will depend on the amount of material to be removed. Ideally, use an electric planer with tungsten carbide tipped blades. This cut edge should be resealed to keep moisture from the chipboard core. Occasionally, there can be a slight difference in the spread of the pattern where the particulates are spread differently. This is typical of a natural appearance of this type of product. There can also be slight differences along the length of a worktop, so you may find that an area further along or from a different worktop will give a more satisfactory match. If the match is not of an acceptable level, do not continue with the installation. If the product is installed, it is deemed to have been accepted and it will not be replaced. Additional sanding will not normally alter the colour match either, so please don't think that any difference can be sorted out later. Measure ready for the cut, allowing for the required overhang at the open end. As you will be refinishing, don't worry about pencil marks on the surface. Using masking tape will give a more easily visible line to work with. As ever, measure twice, cut once. As with any worktop joint, the final finish is dependent on the quality of the cut. Ensure that your router bit is sharp and that your jig or straight edge are firmly clamped into place. Three or four passes of the router are normally enough. If you need to cut the worktops roughly to size, you can use a jigsaw or circular saw. Then, taking into account the size of the base of the router, measure the position for clamping our straight edge. Finish the cut by trimming back with the router. The mason's mitre is cut as you would with a laminate worktop. Here, the jig is clamped in place and the female side of the joint is cut. Three or four passes of increasing depth will ensure that the cut is clean. Clamp the jig to the reverse of the board and cut the three bolt holes. Two passes will normally be enough. The tongues that are supplied as part of the jointing kit are a vital part of the installation of a Maya joint. Don't be tempted to ignore them. They not only help with ensuring that the joint is level, but they are also key to the strength of the bond that the glue can make. The groove that the tongues sit in needs to be cut directly under the surface, so that the adhesive bonds to the acrylic surface material and the tongue for a totally secure finish. The groove is cut with either a Titman UG3 groover with a UG ALR arbor, or you can use a biscuit groover to produce a cut 3mm wide and 13mm deep. Finish the groove just short of the front edge, but go all the way through to the back of the worktop. In the case of a breakfast bar or similar, finish both grooves short of the face material. With the adjoining worktop in the correct position, Mark the position of the male joint in pencil on the underside of the worktop. Be aware that in doing this, you may leave pencil marks on the female side of the joint that will need to be cleaned off before completing the joint. This is particularly vital on the lighter colours in the Maya range. The male side of the joint is cut much the same way as the female side. Here, as we are using the 1.8 meter sink module that is edged on both sides, similar to a breakfast bar, we have made a full depth plunge cut at the back edge of the joint to avoid the cutter splitting the surface when it pushes through at the end of its cut. Again, three or four passes will allow the router to move freely and make a clean straight edge. Cut the three matching bolt holes. Now, both halves of the joint are complete. Before we finish the joint, our two worktops are now ready for dry fitting. This stage is vital to make sure the two halves fit together perfectly before they're stuck together. As the router tends to deflect at the end of the cut, here we are using a sanding block to flatten this off. To minimize the amount of excess glue around the joint, two layers of masking tape are applied, approximately two to three millimeters either side of the joint on both sides and on the front edge. Clean the tongues and the edges of the joint with the isopropyl alcohol wipes. Each jointing kit includes three tongues that are pre-sanded ready for use in the joint. Usually they are supplied in the same decor as the kit itself, but as they are not visible after installation, it doesn't matter what colour they are. For 600mm and 650mm worktops, 
use two tongues, and for 900 mm breakfast bars, use all three. Mix the adhesive. The adhesive and hardener are in a single sachet, separated by a divider. Once the divider is removed, the two components should be thoroughly mixed together, around 20 times. The divider itself is ideal for this. The adhesive is a two-part acrylic adhesive that is colour matched specifically to each decor. Not all have the name of the decor on the pack. For instance, the adhesive for Volcano may be labelled as black. There will be a date stamped on the outside of the box. That is the use-by date of the adhesive. The date on the pack itself is the fill date. Snip the corner off the sachet to give a hole around 4 to 5 millimetres in diameter. That will be convenient to pipe the adhesive into the joint. As the adhesive starts to cure, the chemical reaction creates heat and you will notice the sachet starts to get hot. Depending on the ambient temperature, you have up to 10 minutes working time with the adhesive. Because of this limited time, ensure that you have everything ready before you start to mix the glue. Pipe it into the groove on one side of the joint. Insert the tongues. Pipe adhesive into the other side. Pull the worktops together. Pull the two sides apart again to leave a 2 to 3 millimeter gap. Pipe an extra bead of adhesive into the gap. Pull the worktops together again and prepare to tighten the bolts. Here, the ratchet spanner is useful when working under the worktop. Adhesive should ooze out along the full length of the joint. Using a scrap of edging or something similar, lightly scrape the excess adhesive from the surface. Don't scrape too deeply, as the adhesive will shrink slightly as it cures. Remove the masking tape and leave to cure for a minimum of 45 minutes. Using the random orbital sander, go through the three grits of sandpaper, 120, 240 and 320. Always start the sander with the paper in contact with the surface. Work in a circular motion and keep the sander flat. Each time you change papers, work slightly wider than the previous grit. This sander has an extraction facility. If your random orbital sander does not have this, wipe the dust from the surface each time you change papers. Work in horizontal, then vertical sweeps, to make sure the sanding is even across the whole area. Clean the area of dust again. If this is left behind, it can affect the final stage of finishing. Apply water. And, using the red Scotch-Brite pad attached to the random orbital sander, follow a similar vertical and horizontal pattern of sanding to blend in the finish. Wipe down with a damp cloth and dry. Check the joint. As the end of the worktop adjacent to the sink has to be cut to size, here we will need to apply a new edge. The initial cut can be made with a jigsaw leaving approximately 5 to 10 millimetres to be trimmed back with the router. As this piece has the edging on both faces, we will use the plunge cut to the back edge to avoid possible splintering. To make sure there is no dirt or grease on the components being glued, clean them thoroughly. An isopropyl alcohol wipe is included in the pack for this purpose. The edging is already sanded to give a key for the adhesive. Make sure you use this side to put the glue on and not the smoother side. Use the wipe to clean the cut edge of the worktop too. To make sure a good even pressure is applied along the length of the edging, we recommend the use of three-way clamps spaced out approximately every 150 millimeters. Use some scrap material or wood under the clamps to make sure that the face of the worktop is not damaged. With all the clamps in place awaiting the edge strip, we are ready to mix the adhesive. Mix the adhesive well and pipe it onto the edging. Make sure there is a good bead of adhesive around the edge of the strip and then fill in the centre portion with a suitable covering. Feed the edging under the row of clamps and hand tighten the lateral part of the clamp. You should see the adhesive squeeze out of the edges. Depending upon the ambient temperature, leave this adhesive to cure for approximately 45 minutes. On cool or damp days, this may take longer to cure fully. When you're applying edging in situ, leave the strip flush to the bottom edge rather than the top, 
This will make the sanding easier, as it's difficult to sand when there is an end panel or a cabinet below. When the adhesive is fully cured, remove the clamps and we are ready to start to sand the edging. Start with the coarsest grade of sandpaper, a 120 grit, and the random orbital sander and remove the overhang from the underside and the end. It is quite easy to see when enough of the excess is removed. Then change to the 240 grit and cover all areas of the edging. To replicate the radius edge of the worktop, roll the sander over the edge. This is all we need to do to the underside of the board. A hacksaw can be used if the overhang is big enough. Start again with the 120 grit and then move on to the 240 grit and then the 320 grit. Now, as well as sanding the edging and creating the slight radius to the top edge, the surface of the top is also sanded and blended in. Clean the dust off. Wet the surface with water. A little washing up liquid helps. Then, use the red scotch bright pad and random orbital sander, working all areas that have been sanded and blend into the surrounding areas. This will create a paste that helps give the final finish of the worktops. Wipe down with a damp cloth and check against the surrounding areas. The Maya sink module is supplied with the cutouts ready prepared and the sinks and all fittings that you will need, except for the taps. Remove the protective film from the bowls. Make sure the edges of the bowl and the sink cutouts are clean and free of debris. The screws for the sink clips are already in place in the sink module. Take these out and keep them to hand. These will be used shortly with the sink clips. Using the silicon supplied, apply a bead of adhesive around the edge of the sink. Carefully position the sink and ensure that it is central to the sink aperture. Now, screw the sink clips loosely in place around the outer edge of the sink. Again, make sure that the sink hasn't slipped out of position. As we are using the bowl and our half module, apply silicon to the second bowl and position this as before. Screw in the remaining sink clips. Don't use a power driver for this. In between the two sinks, the clip should hold both bowls in place. The screws should be hand tight and a small amount of sealant will ooze around the edge. On the underside of the sink, this is not a problem, but any excess should be wiped off the stainless steel insides of the bowls. The waste kits are standard and their fitting is straightforward. The kit includes a pop-up waste. The control fits in the front hole and the control cable from the main bowl is held in place with the collar nut. Cutting out for a hob. When making a cutout for a sink or a hob, key points are the radius of the corner of the cutout, making a radius on the top edge of the cut, and the use of the heat reflective tape for hobs. Drill holes at each corner of the cutout of at least 10 millimeters. The cut can be made with either a jigsaw and finished with a router and straight edge. Or, if you have a jig for the cutout, simply use the router and guide to make the cut. Here, we are using the jig to trim back the cutout we made with the jigsaw. The top edge of the cutout needs to be rounded off to avoid any sharp edges that could chip. This is done either using a 3mm radius cutter or simply sanding the edge with a 120 or 240 grit paper. Each worktop is supplied with a length of heat reflective tape. For hob cutouts, this should always be used to protect the worktop. This is simply applied around the inside edge and approximately 50 millimeters onto the surface. Fitting Meyer Accessories Decorative support panels are a simple way to achieve a framed look to your kitchen. To fit them, they are simply screwed to the carcass. To fit splashbacks, first the wall should be prepared to accept the bonding. Depending on the wall covering, this may involve sanding or scoring the wall. Then it should be cleaned and allowed to dry. Apply silicon to the back of the splashback, then push the panel firmly into place. Upstands are simply cut to length and fixed in the same way as splashbacks. For joint areas, the Meyer acrylic adhesive can be used and carefully sanded back. On longer lengths of splashback or upstand, two people may need to assist in applying pressure along the full length. The 150mm deep plinth is simply located and fixed using standard brackets. Care and maintenance. Maya worktops are designed for living. 
and a key part of this is the ease with which they can be cleaned, maintained, and where necessary, refurbished. In this demonstration, we will be using items from the Maya Care Kit, available from your retailer or from the Maya website. The day-to-day -day cleaning of Maya doesn't need any specialist cleaners. This decor is Volcano, which is our darkest colour and the one most likely to show marks in use. For this reason, we always recommend that particular care is taken when fitting and using this colour. The surface itself is durable and is resistant to most of the day-to-day -day wear in the domestic kitchen environment. But the surface can be damaged, so as ever, prevention is the best cure. Always use a chopping board when preparing food. Never place hot objects directly onto the surface. Always use a trivet or hot rods. Remember, some items of heavy crockery can scratch any surface, particularly those with unglazed bases. Wipe spilt liquids away as soon as possible and avoid contact with aggressive chemical substances such as nail polish remover, chlorine, acetone, drain cleaner, etc. But don't worry. Even if the worktop appears to be damaged, it can be refurbished back to its original finish. Over a short period of time in use in the home, Maya worktops will develop a smoother finish and appearance. In the first days after installation, the dry finish of the surface may show finger marks more readily than it will do when it's achieved this patina.